Hi guys. Um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist um, at York Hospital. And um, today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of blood clots. Um, I'm really sorry I haven't uh, made any videos recently, uh, but I've been overwhelmed with work and um, I've started noticing that my um, views are going down and my subscribers are getting less and less so I thought I'd better get my act together and do some videos so there's going to be a few videos coming up soon but um, I wanted to talk about blood clots and the reason I want to talk about blood clots is because the majority of problems that I see as a heart specialist and generally the majority of problems that we see in a hospital are in some way due to blood clots okay blood clots are extremely common now, most people think of blood clots as clots in the leg or clots in the lung, but actually it would be true to say that the majority of strokes are due to blood clots, the majority of heart attacks are due to blood clots, uh, lung clots, of course, pulmonary embolism, PEs, uh, clots in the leg, DVTs, uh, but heart attacks and strokes are really big. And the problem with blood clots is that they can form extremely quickly and therefore you get very little warning and when they happen when they develop they stop oxygen rich blood particularly if they develop in the arteries where they're most dangerous they stop oxygen rich blood from getting to its destination okay so if the artery that is supplying your heart muscle develops a blood clot then that would stop it would obstruct the artery and it would stop blood which is oxygen rich from getting to the heart now the heart being a muscle needs oxygen to keep surviving and if the oxygen doesn't get to it then the heart muscle will starve and slowly the heart muscle will start dying because it's not getting oxygen and the longer the blood clot remains the more damage there will be to the organ that that blood vessel was supplying and if there's a lot of damage then it may be that the organ doesn't function and if the organ doesn't function then that uh, then will lead to potential death um, <clears throat> so there's a few things just to say the first thing is that sometimes the blood clot just blocks the vessel as wherever they're formed okay so for example you're in a big artery a blood clot forms the artery gets blocked. That is called a thrombosis or a thrombus. Okay, so that clot which is blocking that artery is called a thrombus. It forms, it blocks the artery where it is formed. Sometimes you get smaller thrombi which aren't actually blocking the artery because they're not big enough, but they get dislodged. And when they get dislodged, they go down with the passage of blood. And as most arteries branch up to smaller and smaller vessels, they eventually get lodged into a vessel uh, which they block completely. And those clots which go and block a vessel far away from where they actually were created are called emboli or embolism. So when you hear of pulmonary embolism, what people are saying is basically that the clot formed somewhere else and then actually went into the lung arteries I moved from where it was created and blocked the vessel. But ultimately, the problem is the same. They are stopping oxygen-rich blood from getting to its destination, thereby causing the destination to starve and die. Okay. Now, it is really important to try and understand why blood clots form and how a healthy lifestyle is so important in reducing the likelihood of blood clots forming. And that's very relevant to all of us because we all fear that we may have a stroke. We all fear that we may have a heart attack. And actually, in some ways, if we get a warning, then that then we're the lucky ones. But the most unlucky people are the ones who don't get a warning whatsoever. And that's usually because they've got a blood clot form that has formed very quickly with no warning. And suddenly, bang, you know, they've got this heart attack happen. Uh, so trying to understand why blood clots form will help you understand why we recommend some of the things that we do okay now there was a very clever german physician called um, uh, professor virchow or virchow i don't know how to pronounce it professor virchow in germany in the 19th century and he looked at why blood clots form and there are 
three main reasons, three main factors which cause blood clots to form. Okay, and the more factors one person has, the more likely they are uh, to be at risk of having blood clots forming. So if you have one factor, you have some risk. If you have two, you have a higher risk. If you have all three, you have a much higher risk. Okay, let's see why blood clots form. The first thing to say is if the blood itself is abnormal, okay, if the, if the, um, if the blood is uh, more likely to clot anyway because it's abnormal, then that's obviously going to increase your likelihood of forming blood clots. Number two, if the blood is not moving as much as it should, i.e. it's relatively static, then it's more likely to clot. We know that because, for example, one of the things we do, for example, when we bleed, is we try and stop blood from getting there. We cause uh, stop blood from moving, and because it doesn't move, it will it clots. So if the blood isn't moving as much, then it will clot. And the third thing, which is particularly relevant, is if the vessel in some way is affected, the vessel in which the blood is flowing is affected and is interfering with the streamlined flow of blood through the vessel, then that can cause it to clot. Okay, So in some ways, if you have, if you have a, a jagged blood vessel, then the blood is not going to go in through it as smoothly it will cause sort of abnormal hemodynamics and it'll cause turbulence and the, the actual vessel wall may become a, uh, an area where the blood could uh, form the clot. Okay, So that's the other thing. Now, let's start looking at some of the things okay, which actually, um, <clears throat> in our lifestyles, which actually predispose us to the risk of clots. The first and foremost thing to say is that, of course, age, okay, the older you get, the more likely you have to have all these three factors. If you get older, if you get older, um, let me just bring this up, sorry, uh, you are more likely to be sedentary. So,